Hello, this is David D. Hillstrom, a critical thinker, does in science, and if you're not buying exactly what mainstream physics and cosmology are selling, then this is the place for you. There are literally thousands and thousands of scientists from around the world that have been working for decades outside the mainstream who have identified problems, fixed those problems, and who are proposing new theories and models. You won't find anything like this on YouTube, so you want to make sure you want to go right down below right there and click on the subscribe button and little bell next to it and you'll be alerted to our next video. Well, I am going to talk today to uh, and show you a video from somebody who is one of my heroes of science and that is Dr. Alexander Unsager. He has given talks at our conference via video for the last two years. He is a hero. Why? Because he's out there fighting the fight uh, against particle physics and the craziness it's, it generates. And so if you have not subscribed to his channel, this channel is called Unsucker's Real Physics. You want to try that. The Machian, T-H-E-M-A-C-H-I-A-N. You can search for that and get right to him. Click that subscribe button and the bell. And he has great books. And I'll have a link to all his books below. And yes, I have been uh, setting up a, an interview with him, with him. He's a hard guy to get a hold of and get our, our schedules together, but you will see him on this channel. But today I am going to show you one of his videos that he just popped up, I think today. And it is, uh, the, the video's entitled, Why Super Symmetry is Nonsense. And I'm going to show you, not so much, I want you to watch the videos about 14 and a half, uh, almost 15 minutes long. I'm not going to show you all of it, obviously, but I'm going to show you pieces of it and let you, and let you in and show you how this guy is out there, uh, gloves are off and punching away. And I want to show you that part of it. And I'm going to show you some of the more general statements he makes. And of course, on symmetry, this is a great, great video. It's worth every, every minute of the, this video to see. But I'm going to point out about four parts of it. In the beginning part is always something really special. So I'm going to play that for you right here. OK. Thanks for being here. I shall assume that everybody in the lecture hall has purposefully chosen to sit here. I would just invite you to think about at the end whether you want to applaud. I hardly do know anybody here, otherwise I probably wouldn't do that talk. However, it's important for me that you don't misunderstand this as a personal insult. What is happening here? One of the things I pointed out before in one of my other videos, I got to redo it because I had the audio. Now I've got, you know, I know what I'm doing a lot more here, but basically what he does in the beginning of his videos is astounding. He basically will say, hey, if you want to walk out of this, you can now and get out of here. I, I'm, he says he thinks you purposely came to this talk. And the reason he says that is because, <clears throat> because what he wants to do is to make sure you understand uh, my, my gloves are off and I am going to go start punching away here. So if you're going to be insulted, you can leave now. There's actually videos where he says that you can hear chairs scraping on the floor and people leaving. So he, he, when he gives these talks, that's the first thing he has to say. He doesn't want to insult. He's not insulting the people. He's not attacking you personally. Why do we have to do that? Why does Alexander Unziger have to even go through those rig that rigmarole? I, I am amazed how he talks to groups at all, how he gets interviews with these people at all. It is quite amazing. I'm sure he is walking a tightrope on how to be taken off the gloves and really telling you how it is and how, in fact, he is going to uh, try and not insult so many people that no one's going to want him to hear him talk. So uh, that is quite amazing. We're going to go to another part here where he talks about strangeness and uh, again, he's. I'm not going to be. Uh, I'm not going to do the super symmetry. This is not about David Deal's talk about symmetry. This is about Alexander Unsucker giving his talk on symmetry, which you should see. But I'm going to point out some really, really interesting things here. So I'm going to go to uh, 220 here and play it. I'll get a little ahead of uh, there before it, and we will go forward. A lot of concepts and do not have any 
relation to reality anymore. I'll just give you an example. Uh, strangeness. Nobody understands beta decay. So this ignorance is kind of vested in the term, oh, that's weak interaction. And if that idea of weak interaction then contradicts with the idea of strong interaction, we call that contradiction strangeness. And now this strangeness is taken as an axis in an imaginary space, and you're going to rotate objects and postulate symmetries. But that's a complete metaphorical concept, and um, taking that as treating that like a, a real space is walking into fantasy land. And some people justifiably called it like this. So, so listen to what he's saying. He's saying that you have the weak and the strong force. And when there's a conflict between them, they call that strangeness. And then that strangeness, which there's no physicality whatsoever to this stuff, then they start putting coordinates on it and then they spin things. It, it is nuts. Here's a guy, a doctoral in physics and science, out here in Europe, going around, giving lectures. He's from Germany. And he is in their face with this. It's incredible. Richard Feynman was a little bit outspoken. SO3 times SO2 times O1, where does it go together? Only if you add stuff that we don't know. There isn't any theory today that has any of that, whatever the hell that is, that we know it's right, that has any experimental check. Now these guys are trying to put this together. They're trying to, but they haven't, okay? So I don't know, you might be, instead of that group, you might be a fan of SO5 or something. I think that's a superficial, kind of dull idea, but that's not the basic problem. Um, the basic problem is this. I mean, supersymmetry from the outset should be kind of an intellectual approach to physics. But look at this standard model. It's a messy patchwork that obviously is too complicated to be credible. And before you start now arguing that, oh, it's so wonderfully experimentally tested, I shall remind you of the seven deadly sins of particle physics. The standard model is hilariously complicated. Good physics is simple. All the real breakthroughs in physics have simplified a lot of uh, the laws of physics. They haven't added these complicated parameters. We have a suppression of basic problems. I shall go to the details in the next slide. I think there is a lot of histor historical ignorance about the methods of physics. I think there is, uh, there is always a signal illusion. Physicists are kind of fooling themselves with very tiny signals they're going to interpret. There is a lot of theoretical wishful thinking along the concepts I named before, these metaphorical labels like isospin and hypercharge and strangeness and whatever it is. There is certainly a lot of parroting and groupthink in the community. And there is a total lack of, of transparency when you go to the raw data. This is something he's talked about. In fact, I made a video of this. And if you go to the CMPS, I'll put a, a link down below as well. Um, I, you know, it, it's, it's incredible. This guy is really laying out compli complication is absolutely true. Suppression of basic problems. I mean, these are things that we in the dissonant world are addressing all the time. Um, this idea, one of the things you may not understand in this talk, in these talks, uh, and, and you sort of get the idea of what is the signal? Well, the signal is some kind of thing that they detect and the detectors, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for the signal for the Higgs boson, for instance. So that's what the signal means. But this is something again, that he goes over over and over. So he's saying, look, these are the these are the seven deadly sins of particle physics. We need to address these problems. Lack of transparency, parity, groupthink. Sound familiar for all of us who are in the CNPS or the MBA for all these decades? Absolutely. We absolutely. Now we're gonna go in another place uh, near the end here, because I don't want to 
keep trying I want you to watch this whole thing but we're gonna go move down to another place near the end before we stop this and uh, it starts at 12 minutes in There is always a signal illusion. Particle physicists for decades have built up new accelerators, have looked at anomalies, have declared them to be new particles, have removed them as a background, and now are looking for the next tiny, tiny signal. So they are fooling themselves with excessive filtering, triggering, and background removal that necessarily lead to detections of poorly specified signals. That's a never-ending story. And so I will make one prediction. After carefully removing the background of all known signals, someday in some accelerator at some high energy, some tiny signal will be discovered, for which the only reasonable explanation is a hint, clue, or smoking gun for an axino, gluino, fotino, foteto, fotuzzo, foticello, there is an open end of Italian diminutives. And well, to conclude, I shall like to dedicate this talk to Ludwig Wittgenstein. I like very much. My advice would be, if you're young enough, try to get out of this business, simply because there is no guarantee that society will fund that kind of bogus science forever. For possible questions, I... That is a really profound statement, I thought. Um, I'm going to end it here, but because he goes on and he gives you examples of books that you can read. He's got a great book list, by the way. But this idea that someday they're going to stop funding this stuff because nothing has come out of it. I mean, it's how many decades and decades and decades worth of work and particle accelerators and all Nobel prizes and patting each other on the back and giving each other laurels to put on their heads and talking nonsense about these signals that mean absolutely nothing. Eventually, he's saying, get out of this. Don't, he's telling his students, don't go into this. This is very similar to what Again, I'll mention that because I'm going to do a video on it where I can remove at least uh, uh, some of the uh, signals of the email that I got from these students who are from Tibet, Nepal. These people, these students said, you know, I don't want to be a specialist of a specialist of a specialist of a specialist and really do nothing. These, people, these people's confidence is really arrogance, we think. I want to change the world. I want to do something. What, what Alexander Underker was saying, look, get out of this. In some sense, and when I first heard this today, I'm thinking, wait a minute. We got to stay in it and sort of fight the fight. Sort of like, hey, if you're, the Democrats are corrupt, Republicans are corrupt, got to get, become a Democrat and then uncorrupt them. Well, maybe there is a different way. Maybe it is, yeah, don't do it. Work on your own. Work outside. Uh, become an engineer. Work, work on the like we're doing but don't waste your time what he's saying i think is don't waste your time becoming a particle physicist going in learning all this stuff and becoming a specialized specialized signal blah, 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 put your name on it uh, 900 people on one paper to find the next uh signal which is the next uh particle which will do nothing for mankind which only wastes money because eventually they're not going to fund it anymore this is going to be a dead end and hopefully people like Alexander Unsker, like this channel, like the CNPS, like all the other channels of dissident scientists out there, people who are critical thinkers out there, will start to turn the tide so that we can get back and start answering questions like, what is gravity? Well, is light a particle in a wave? Is there, is there uh, a solution to the wave particle duality? My dad's hand goes up, yep. May of 2015 came up with at least one explanation, one solution for that. Those are the things that we need to be going towards and doing. That we can change this tide. 
that people like us and continually working together and critically thinking and teaching critical thinking to the, the, to the next generation and to current people who love science but aren't, aren't buying all this, as I say, maybe there's a chance. So in some sense, he's saying, don't do it. What he's saying is don't waste your mind. And I've heard Dr. Karazani say the same thing. Uh, my mentor, he said, David, there's so many brilliant, brilliant people in particle physics, but they're all working in a fantasy world. And that's a shame. But remember, don't take what I, my word or anyone else's. Look, watch this video. Think for yourself. There's lots of great books. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Alexander Unsker has great books he recommends in this video. I'm not going to talk about it, so you can go and watch it. And always stay critical, stay thinking. I'm David D. Hilster. I'm your science therapist. Ciao for now.